For almost three years, the residents of Flint, Michigan, have had poison literally running through their pipes. The city's water supply has been tainted by lead and other dangerous pollutants since the city started drawing its water from the polluted Flint River in April of 2014, in an effort to cut costs in the economically depressed city. Now, by January of 2015, though, city officials were ensuring their own supplies of clean bottled water, and the governor's office was informed of the toxic water in February. But it wasn't until October that year that residents were warned to stop consuming the city's toxic water. Since then, though, the people of Flint have relied on bottled water for everything from cooking and drinking. Some are even hesitant to use unfiltered tap water to wash their hands or bathe. Now, to date, six to 1,200 children in Flint have been exposed to lead. Now, this exposure will likely create problems for years to come as lead poisoning can lead to physical and mental development problems that can last a lifetime. Some have even argued that officials have dragged their feet on fixing the problem because the city is 57% black and 41% poor. A federal judge ruled in November that Flint residents are entitled to have bottled water delivered to their homes as a rough substitute for the essential service that municipal water systems must furnish. And on December 5th, the House and Senate finally agreed to authorize $170 million in aid to support clean Flint water. But this may be too little too late for the people of Flint who will be feeling the effects of this crisis for decades to come and are even living now with dire illnesses due to the lead. Now, Melissa Mays, a mother from Flint and founder of the group What Are You Fighting For?, is here to talk about what led to this crisis, the impacts it's had on her family, and how the government turned a blind eye while allowing Nestle to come in and pump clean groundwater for free. Check it out. Melissa, thank you so much for joining me today. I want to begin the conversation by asking you, um, how exactly did Flint residents uh, find out that the water was poisoned, and why did it take so long for them to be notified? that there was even something wrong with the water that they were using for cooking, for cleaning, for bathing. What happened? Well, first off, we received no notice that anything was wrong with our water until January of 2015. The switch was in April of 2014. And so basically, 